ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I've got a great showdown for you guys. It's the Intel i3-8100 going up against the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G. So this is going to be an interesting one. I'm going to be testing them with their onboard graphics and seeing which one is the better value out of these two. So first of all, I just want to say, guys, my skin looks a bit sort of messed up today. Um, I have been having a lot of problems with it lately. You know, it's kind of been really annoying to me. It's actually been painful as well. Um, but I'm trying to get on top of it so I look all pretty for you guys. It's obviously something I wouldn't normally address, but I just want to let you know that's the reason for that. However, let's get on with the video then, and let's talk about the CPUs themselves and what they come with. So, the little i3 here is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU. It's a Coffee Lake CPU. It has a 3.6 GHz clock speed, a 65W TDP, and it's coming with Intel's HD Graphics 630, and this is a locked CPU. Now, the Ryzen 3 2200G is a 4-core, four 4-thread four Ryzen CPU. Same amount of cores, same amount of threads as the 8100. It comes with a 3.5 GHz base clock, a 3.7 GHz boost clock. It also has a 65W TDP, and it comes with the Vega 8 GPU, and it is fully unlocked. So on the surface, the 2200G does seem like the more powerful, you know, APU out of the two of them. But of course, we'll have to get to the testing to see if that is truly the case. Before that, let's talk about the test rigs then. So most tech YouTubers like to appear like they know everything for the most part. Um, we like it because we, you know, you guys put a lot of trust in us and all that, and you often won't see tech reviewers, tech journalists, and that admit their mistakes. Um, some do, but a lot of them like to always seem like they're sort of uh, <laughs> on top of things. But I'm a bit different like that, as you know, guys. I never tell you guys that I'm a tech expert or anything like that. I try to uh, be as close to you guys as possible. I just refer to myself as an enthusiast, like many of you guys are. So when I went to test out the 2200G, I made a colossal mistake, a very, very amateur mistake, and I'll admit it. So I went to chuck this in the motherboard, the uh, ASUS X370 uh, Crosshair 6 motherboard. That's in my second rig. And only after I got everything installed and I went to, you know, put all the plugs in the back of <laughs> the motherboard, I realized that there are no, like, HDMI or DisplayPort outs of that motherboard. So you can't use an APU with it. So, I had to run quickly down to Playtech, grab a B350 motherboard, I grabbed the uh, ASUS Strix B350F gaming motherboard, come back, switch everything out, and uh, that worked. I had to do a BIOS update first, so I chucked the 1600 in, do the BIOS update, then chuck the APU in. So a bit of a runaround, all because I didn't think to check the rare I.O. So, that was probably the stupidest mistake I've ever made in the whole time I've done Tech Showdown. <laughs> so you guys can have a bit of a laugh about that at my expense. So yeah, uh, test rigs wise with the 2200G, as I said, uh, using the Strix B350F motherboard, one I actually haven't ever used before. So I used that to test out the 2200G. For the 8100, I just used my MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon. Now, they both use the same memory, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum memory set at 3,000 megahertz. I think that's a reasonable amount for most people. Uh, Cooler-wise, they both ran their stock coolers because I would imagine the vast majority of you guys who are buying these CPUs would probably just use them with their stock coolers. And, of course, uh, there's no discrete GPU because I was testing them with their onboard graphics. Now, that being said, let's talk about overclocking and the temperatures then. So the little 8100 here is locked, so there's not really much you can do about that. But the 2200G is unlocked. Although, as I found, it's it runs very hot once you overclock both, if you start playing around with like the, the onboard GPU, the Vega 8, and the CPU cores themselves. 
uh, this thing gets re really, really toasty. So I would only recommend if you're on the stock cooler is uh, bumping up the uh, GPU speed. So I managed to move it up to a 1600 megahertz. I believe the default is 1100. So it's a pretty good increase there, 500 megahertz increase. You have to bump up the voltage and stuff a little bit as well. Uh, with that, the temperatures did rise quite a bit. So I took the highest temperatures from a bunch of the tests I ran. And as you guys can see, the 8100 does run hotter than the 2200G at stock speeds. So that's mainly because the Intel stock cooler is just absolutely crap compared to the one you get uh, with the 2200G. Uh, but once you overclock, the 2200G gets a lot hotter. And that was only touching the GPU clock speed. Uh, if I tried to touch the CPU cores themselves, uh, the, the temps just went through the roof. It was like well over 90 degrees. So on the stock cooler, you're basically only going to be able to uh, maybe bump up the GPU clock. And that's what I would recommend doing anyway, as you'll see through the benchmarks. Speaking of which, let's get into the benchmarking then. So for this, I, I basically did a bunch of synthetics and I also ran through some games, some low requirement games, medium requirement games, and high requirement games. And one thing you'll notice is that all of them were done at 1080p. And my reason for this was on my community page on my channel, I asked you guys, what would you rather have, like high resolution and lower graphics settings or lower resolution and higher graphics settings? And it was actually quite close, but the people, the, the majority was a higher resolution with lower graphics settings. So for that reason, I ran all of these tests at 1080p. So let's jump into it and see how these two CPUs perform. won in the rendering test and it also won in the physics test although barely uh, the 2200g just destroyed it and everything else destroyed it that's the perfect word for it uh, if we look now to the average FPS even at their stock speeds the 2200g does a over double the FPS average FPS than the 8100 there 
That is a huge difference. And once we uh, overclocked the GPU on the 2200G, we saw that increase even more, giving a 23.6% performance improvement over the stock 2200G. That is just massive. That is colossal. The 2200G's performance was very, very, very impressive. Now, in many of those games, you'll see the FPS is still below 60. Some people don't mind gaming at above 30 FPS, especially people that are only looking to build a very budget PC. Um, but in many other cases, people would still like it to be above 60 FPS at 1080p, uh, if possible. And you see, it's still going to be difficult. In many of those, you will need to be dropping down the resolution to 720p, unfortunately. Uh, even if you're running it on low settings, you're going to have to be dropping that resolution down. But yeah, the 2200G still did very, very good. And I was very impressed by it, which leads us into the conclusion. And what do I make of these two CPUs? Well, let's bring price into the equation. So right now, here in New Zealand at Playtech, you can buy the i3-8100 for 195 New Zealand dollars. The Ryzen 3... 2200G is coming in at 169 New Zealand dollars, so 15% less. So <laughs> really, the conclusion is the 2200G in New Zealand is 15% cheaper, and even if you're not interested at all at overclocking, which plenty of you guys uh, just don't care about overclocking, it will double, more than double the average FPS over the 8100. For 15% cheaper. Not only that, but motherboard wise, uh, you could pick up a very cheap motherboard with the 2200G, where that's going to be a bit more difficult with the 8100, especially since if you're just using this as a stepping stone, uh, you know, to move up to something later on, you could go with like what I use, the Strix B350F would be a great motherboard and you could, uh, you know, go all the way up to an 8 core later on with that motherboard if you really wanted to. So the upgrade path is there for the uh, 2200G. I mean, it's still there with the 8100. I mean, if you paired it with the Z370, then you got a great upgrade path, but then you have to pay for that motherboard and it just makes the value for money even worse for the 8100. Now, the stock coolers are not ideal on either of them. Uh, I mean, they're, they're fine if you're going to be running them at stock speeds, but if you are someone who's wanting to overclock, then I would suggest maybe uh, investing in a cheap air cooler for the 2200G. Uh, Steve over at Hardware Unbox recently did a video, and he showed that even with a $20 Australian air cooler that he had, uh, he could overclock the CPU and the GPU on the 2200G. And that's where I think it's going to be the best value uh, if you want to squeeze every last bit of performance out of the 2200G. But even with the stock cooler, you will still be able to do a bit of overclocking there, uh, but just not as much as if you, say, bought a little cheapy air cooler. So overall, I say the 2200G wins big time. Sorry, Intel. Um, yeah, you just got destroyed at this price point. Uh, you guys sometimes like to say I shill for Intel. Other times you guys say I shill for uh, AMD. Both of these CPUs I got from Playtech off the shelves, not sent by any company. And this is just the truth. I say it how it is. Like I've always done with this channel. I tell you guys which is the best. I don't care about the companies. Frankly, I really don't care about them. And Intel, sorry, you just got wasted at this price point now. The <laughs> 2200G. <laughs> just value for money wise this is a seriously good value cpu or apu i mean it just absolutely destroys the 8100 so yeah if you're someone that's in the market now you don't have much money but you just want to get in the door on some pc gaming then yeah check out the ryzen 3 2200g this is exceptionally good value now I thank you all for watching this video. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What are your reasons? I'd really like to know. I thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.